the sun gives us free energy every day. Access to this energy varies. Sunny days, partly cloudy days, or stormy days all affect our access to the sun's energy. 173,000 terawatts, that's trillions of watts, of solar energy strikes the Earth daily. This turns out to be about one kilowatt hour for every square meter. The average U.S. household uses between 25 and 30 kilowatt hours per day. So, it turns out we need 20 or 30 solar panels to provide the electricity needs for the average house. Hi, I'm Roger Coons. Uh, my wife and I are the homeowners and we're very excited about getting the solar panels on here. We're going to produce about 138% of the energy we need for that calculation. We've included estimates on if we had an electric car and any other electrical stuff so that we can get off of oil. Our home in Connecticut is about 2100 square feet and we are fortunate to have a south facing roof. We want to be clean energy producers and take the burden off the traditional grid. We want to be energy partners, not customers. We want to help move away from fossil fuels towards clean energy in our communities and support microgrids. You can ultimately run everything in your house with solar and charge your electric car and store energy in a power wall, that's a battery, for those cloudy days. I'm uh, Kyle Adams. I'm the roof foreman of the day. Um, we got a beautiful house here and the install's going good. We got your solar panels right here. We got our safety protection. I'm going to put an anchors right now. We chose Sun Power by Earthlight to install our solar panels. You have many choices here. We also chose high efficiency panels ones with about 22% efficiency, so that we could use less panels. We designed the array based on our needs today and in the future, including charging an electric car. This led to the installation of a 7.5 kilowatt system, drawing upon 21 solar panels. We have room for a few more, but the traditional powers that be would not approve of these additional panels. Our system is designed to generate about 10,000 kilowatt hours of electricity per year. According to the Energy Information Administration, fossil fuels account for about 63% of our utility scale electricity. Now a lot of that is natural gas, about two-thirds of it. Nuclear accounts for about 20% of the utility scale electricity. And renewables, well that's a smaller percentage. 7% from wind, 7% from hydropower, and only 2% from solar. And, amazingly, we burn wood, landfill gas, and municipal solid waste to produce almost 3% of our utility-scale electricity. The thing is, I want to use the cheapest, cleanest, safest energy for my home, and that's solar or wind. But we've only got a modest house and an eighth of an acre, so no room for a windmill. Some say natural gas is better, but we get over 65% of our natural gas from fracked sources. The U.S. Geological Survey, the EPA, and health organizations have all shown that fracking is contaminating some of our water supply and seriously impacting people's health. So why not go clean and cost-effective? Is it fun? <laughs> it is the funnest. Great. <laughs> so what are you doing here? Well, Today tell, I'm... Tell me your name. I'm Paul Anello. Yeah, how long have you been doing it? I've been doing it for three months now. All right, you like it? Yes, I do. All right. There go the wires. They'll be connecting all the panels together. And uh, we got the panels, and each panel has a number, and that is kept track. That's kept track right there on the layout. Let's look at the carbon footprints. Coal produces about a pound of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour. Petroleum is about the same. Natural gas, just under a pound. Solar, solar doesn't produce any carbon dioxide. 
but we do have the embodied energy use. That's the energy we need to use to build the power stations or the solar panels or whatever we happen to be building. Coal, oil, and gas are very high in terms of their embodied energy use. Solar is about one-third to one-quarter of those fossil fuels. My name is Kevin Stefano. I'm a master electrician. I started in a trade when I was 16 years old. Uh, I've been doing solar for about six years now. I've got commercial experience, industrial, residential experience. I've done quite a few different things, but I love solar. I love doing solar. We're in a different place every day, and customers are always happy to see us yeah. doing something green. And the system we sell is a really nice system. Yeah. Uh, it's just It has a lot of features, a lot of monitoring features. It's just really nice. It's the most watts per square foot, mm -hmm. which is nice. It's all about watts. Yeah. That's it. Watts up. Power. <laughs> what, what's up? I like uh, it. Actually, our panels, it comes off the roof as alternating current. Oh, it uh, does. Our panels have uh, microinverters on every panel, so it comes off at 240 volts. It comes off as AC right off the roof. I'm going to explain to you how the solar actually comes from the roof down into the panel, into your system. The two strings, which in solar they call them strings, they're actually circuits come down this pipe right here. And you have string one here, string two. In this panel, they combine into one set of wires, 240 volts, an A, B, a neutral, and a ground. They go from here into here, the meter. Here. Out of the meter into the disconnect. From the disconnect, they go down through here into your main breaker, and they tap in into your main breaker right there. So that's how it back feeds the entire system gets into your system. You can, you can monitor production, and then over here you'll be able to monitor consumption, what you're actually using in the house every minute of the day okay, as well. well, well that be this third one right now, the third breaker is the supervisor, and that right there monitors consumption and production. Consumption is what you're using. There's CTs in your main breaker, and that tells you exactly what you're using every minute of the day. And then there's a CT in this panel that tells you what you're producing in every minute of the day. So it monitors everything. It's a really nice system. And you can, there's an app for your phone and one for your computer on that. And this is, like I said, a shut off for the fire department to be able to go to one spot, kill the power to the house, and kill the solar all in one okay, shot. Okay, great. Yep. We've also, if you want to take a look here, We've updated your grounding. We put what's called a ground bridge in, and the bridge is basically for the phone company, the cable company, anyone else who comes in and needs grounding, they can tap onto that. And we added another ground rod, an eight foot ground rod back there. The caution tape is just to make it easy for the inspector to find it when he comes. Okay. According to carbonbrief.org, for each hour of electricity generated, coal and oil produce 109 grams of carbon dioxide equivalent per kilowatt hour. Natural gas produces 78 grams of carbon dioxide equivalent per kilowatt hour. If we look at solar and wind, we're between four and six grams of carbon dioxide equivalent per kilowatt hour. Our global goal to keep the earth from warming above two degrees centigrade is 15 grams per carbon dioxide equivalent per kilowatt hour by 2050. Solar and wind do that none of the fossil fuels do. Is solar cheaper than fossil fuels? If I use the grid as my source of electricity, I'm paying about $130 a month on average. Over eight years, with 3% inflation on energy per year, I will end up paying the utility $12,142. Now, a 7.5 kilowatt solar system costs me about $23,000. After rebates and incentives, it's about $12,000 out of my pocket. So in eight years, I've paid for my solar. Let's look at the next eight years then. If I'm still on the grid, well, with inflation and everything, I will be paying $16,000 in electric bills over those next eight years. But if I have solar and it's paid off, well, my electric bill is essentially zero. That sounds like a pretty good deal to me.